All right, I think we're back, guys. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Sorry about that interruption. Um, that was very strange. But welcome to part two of Q&A with uh, Daniel and Heather Adams. <laughs> Lord Jesus, protect the Wi-Fi. Yes. Protect the connection. In the mighty name of Jesus. So as you guys are tuning back in, <clears throat> make sure that you like and share so part two can get put out there also. So we're going to get back to it. We were talking about the kids and how, you know, we're able to um, keep them. Well, not keep them. What is the question? <laughs> it was uh, just how we how incorporate we get, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. how we incorporate the kids into ministry. Like I said, ministry is full time. We raise the kids up. We we keep Jesus as the centerpiece of our life and our family, and they will naturally um follow from that but you guys can hear the rest of that answer uh on the last thing because i don't want to just start talking again and yeah i think you gave a good answer yeah but anyway once again like and share guys thank you guys for tuning back in um you guys watching in the future please also like share comment all that stuff all right so let's get the questions back uh i guess why i'll wait for a minute and we will wait for a youtube or facebook question so you guys Put a question in YouTube or Facebook for me right now, and uh, I will answer along with my wife. So, baby looking beautiful. But I have to say that because every day you're beautiful. You look beautiful, too. No, I don't like beautiful. I'm handsome. You're handsome. Yeah, I don't want the beautiful. She called me beautiful. <laughs> in the eyes of the Lord, I'm the bride, so yeah. I'm beautiful to him, you know? <laughs> I like handsome, though. Handsome's... Uh, you are handsome. Handsome's good. Br just put the Basculate. question, question, Heather and Daniel. I hear it go up. I hear a lot of teachings that say generational qu uh, curses are not true, and Ezekiel 18 is bought up. Okay, Ezekiel 18, can you get... I, I need to know what Ezekiel 18 says, first of all. Um, okay, I can answer that question, even though this isn't a marriage question, but still, uh, I'll answer it. Generational cross, ge generational crosses, generational curses were broken at the cross of Calvary. The Bible tells us any man hung on a tree is cursed. Jesus was hung on a tree. He became cursed for everyone so that we could be blessed. I think the problem is, is the gospel is not presented correctly in that, in that way. And what happens is the things of yesterday, the ways of the family, the things implemented in our DNA start to follow us, right? Um, so we have to break generational curses so the truth of the cross can be their reality. So... Should people be walking in generational curses? Isaiah, I need you to please con be, pay attention. I don't need that. I need you to pay attention to the chat so I can see the communication over there. Thank you. Sorry, guys. I tried not to get interrupted, but I want to make sure that I'm following uh, you guys, and my guys aren't doing the best job right now, so I want to make sure that they are keeping up with the comments so that I don't miss your comments. No offense, guys. Just letting you know. Don't do, do don't do the most. I got I got Keegan right here. He can read the Bible verses. <laughs> anyway, um, generational generational curses, guys, were taken care of at the cross of Calvary. So think about this: you're you're with a preacher, and a preacher says you need to break twenty generational curses to walk in victory, or you hear a preacher say Jesus Christ was went to the went to the cross. The Bible says that he was cursed by being hung on a tree, like it says in Deuteronomy, I believe. And because of that, he took all those curses so that you could be blessed. Wow, Jesus died for every curse? Yes, he died for every curse, every last curse your family could have ever committed. So, so that means I'm blessed? Yes, let's take it further. It even says, I think it's in Acts, uh, it's on up there. Um, it says, any, it says, People who are filled with the Holy Spirit. Acts 2, maybe. No, no. It's it's past that. No. Acts 2.38. Is it 2.38? I think it's Acts 2.38. Which verse is it? Yeah, yeah. That anybody who is filled, the, those who are filled with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. 
and keep going. I'm two thirty, and you will be blessed. There it is. Yes, Acts two thirty nine. He says, you'll be blessed when you follow the Lord. You'll be blessed up to a thousand generations. So you're not cursed. You're blessed. If you've received God, you've received the Holy Spirit, you're blessed up to a thousand generations. You're blessed. The promise is for you and your children. You're not, you're not promised the curse. You're promised the blessing. So you're blessed. What happens, though, is sometimes we listen to teachings on these generational curses and stuff, and we start find, looking for all these curses that we may be under and all that. No, accept the truth of the word and the truth shall set you free. The truth is, is you are not generationally cursed. You are generationally blessed. Mm -hmm. Right, babe? Amen. I don't look, I'm not looking back to yesterday right now. I'm looking forward to a future and a hope. Jeremiah 2, uh, uh, 20, 20, 20, 20, 29, 11. Yeah. Oh my goodness. My brain. <laughs> Help me, Lord. Jeremiah 29, 11, you had, that God has a future and a hope for you, not one to harm you, but for one for you to prosper and to be in good health. He has, a, he has, he has plans for you, right? So this generational curse stuff, yeah, sometimes you look and the Lord will give you a word of knowledge because somebody's walking in the reality of a curse and we break it. But the truth, the truth is that you are not generationally cursed. You are generationally blessed. If you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you know, some of us need to break, break away from some old teachings and stuff and just come into the truth. The truth is I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm not cursed because of what my grandpa and grandma did. I'm blessed because of what Jesus did on the cross of Calvary. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm saying. That's what the Bible says. So the Bible says that not Daniel. If you read Old Testament, you can do things the Old Testament way and you can go back under the law and try to do everything in your own strength. Or you can go into the New Testament and believe in the finished work of the cross. So um, I'm looking for more questions here. Um, if you desire the gift of the Holy Spirit and you don't see anywhere only in the gift you desire, does it mean you have that gift? Or I don't know. Hold on. You desire the gift of the Holy Spirit. And you don't see anywhere. Only I, I. I can't. I don't know what you're. You're asking. Go. Go. I can't really read that question. Um. Did God speak to either of you individually about marrying each other? If you listen to our testimony, you'll find out. We. <laughs> yes. God. God. I think God uh, spoke to both of us at the same time about that. About marrying one another. Because we both came through a traumatic experience and um, we decided that we wanted to take this road because we loved each other and we chose to be with each other and God, we consulted God in it and a few people that were helping us in that season and we chose to go the marriage route and here we are and we're very happily married. We love one another and God is good. Would you say that's the answer, babe? Yes. Amen. That's the answer. I mean, look, we we practically love each other so much that we kind of glow the same. <laughs> We're even wearing Christmas shirts for you guys. That's how much we love each other. I was so happy you wore your Christmas shirt. Do demonized Christians go to heaven? <laughs> what? I I laugh because I'm thinking about that. Do demon a lot of people have died with demons. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh People die every day, and they die with demonic bondage they may not be aware of in their temple, you know what I mean, in their body, in their soul. Some, uh, Depending on your, your theological standing, some people would be like, well, show me that in the Bible where demonized Christians go to heaven. Hang out a little while with me. You might find out you got some things going on. Um, but, yes, people, we're, we're saved by grace through faith mm -hmm. alone, not by our works Put our spirit, the spirit of who you are, the spirit of your name, meaning the spirit of Daniel, me, my, my, me. I took, I'm a whole spirit that took a name on named Daniel. You know, when you, when your child, when your child is born, your child has no name until you give the child a name. So my name is Daniel. The spirit of Daniel, uh, in union with the Holy Spirit, is going to heaven. Now, anything that's in this body, in my flesh, or in my soul that I may be unaware of, and I just die. Yes, people die with demons, but they don't take demons with them to heaven. 
Their spirit goes to heaven. So you say, can a demonized Christian, um, should a Christian have demons? Absolutely not, but they do. They do. I mean, statistically, you can see thought processes, bad teaching, all kinds of stuff allows demons to come in. Um, so I would say that, yeah, Christians who have been fighting demonic bondage, yes, they go to heaven if they put their faith in Christ and Christ alone. So um, anybody... Can does it okay? Do you think a curse has a demon attached? Yes, it can. You can be cursed, and then a demon can come hang out, and then there can just be a curse sometimes. But curses open the doors for demons, so usually they go hand in hand. Um, somebody said you need to finish your marriage portion on YouTube. I agree, Kayla. That would involve you. That's your part three. To what degree is choosing the correct name for your child? You know, it is very important that you name, especially if you're a Christian and you're naming your child, you understand what you're naming your child and why you're naming your child. Like, uh, my daughter's name is Faith, and she is full of faith. Uh, my daughter's name is Hope, and she's she's sweet, and she's bringing hope. Uh, my son's name is Aiden, and it means fiery one, and he is definitely fiery. Trust me. <laughs> yes, he's definitely full of fire. I didn't even know I named it. I didn't even think that I was named. I named him before. Yeah, before you had. Yeah. I, so, so funny story about my son Aiden's name is, you know, my name's Daniel. His mother went by the name Jade. So we said, Jaden. Uh, I said, let's do something different, Aiden. Then I find out. Now, listen, this is, guys, this is a the world thing. So just uh, Daniel doesn't watch this show anymore. I barely watched the show, but I used to watch it a little bit back in the 90s. Listen, okay, there was a show called Sex and the City. Some of y'all are guilty of watching it. You need to repent. I'm just <laughs> but there was a show called Sex and the City, and the guy on there name was Aiden. And that's what people kept telling me. Oh, that's a great name. I used to watch this show. And I'm like, I don't want my, na my son's name to be related to this. You know what I mean? Don't do this to me. But I had no idea because I didn't, uh, you know, I didn't know. I didn't know. Some of y'all know. Does anybody know that? Do y'all? Did y'all? Any of y'all ladies that are probably my age or a little older than me? Y'all, y'all, y'all had to watch it. The ladies used to watch that show like crazy. Do not go watch it in Jesus' name. If you do, it ain't because I mentioned it. All right, I'm just saying about my son's name. You go watch that show. It's on you. It had. Jen, what was that girl's name? Uh, not Jennifer. It, I forget the woman's name, but she's famous. Yeah, stay away from it. Stay away from it. It's when things started to go bad in the world and on, on TV. <laughs> yeah, don't watch that. That was that HBO stuff, Cinemax back in the day. <laughs> Look, so Lewis said, I repent. So somebody said about finances. I want to ask, answer that question. Uh, yes, but it's very, go over here on YouTube and find the finances. How do we manage? So remember this question, all right, babe? How do we manage our finances? Wow, that'll be a good one, all right? Somebody said I watched it over and over and I repented. <laughs> um, naming your child is very important because it's, it's prophetic. It's you're speaking into their life. Like I've met, a, there was a woman that lived near me um, when I was growing up and her name was Jezebel. She acted like Jezebel. She was she was she was wild. I'm not saying I'm not saying the name Je I, I don't, what does Jezebel mean? It doesn't mean a bad thing actually. It I don't think it has a bad bad meaning. But um yeah, the, the, you got it. Yeah. Wow. wow. So in Hebrew Jezebel means pure virginal. That's crazy. I... Talk about perverting a name. Yeah. <laughs> Talk about deception. Y'all, that's crazy. So names are good. So we want to make sure that we name our kids correctly because our na the names have connotation. For example, I'll give you my name, Daniel. Right? God is my judge. If you've been following me, <laughs> you can tell men have judged me up, down, and all around, and I still make it out by somehow. It's because God is my judge. It doesn't matter what man says. It matters what God says. And I, I stand with that. So God is my judge, not man. So people have judged me. They've made false this, false that. Call me. I think they've called me everything but my name. And I'm still standing by the grace of Jesus Christ. God is my judge. So, you know, names mean a lot. They really do. So 
pay attention to your name and you'll be able to really form it around your life also. So finances, uh, how do we how do we handle our finances? Uh, how do we manage our finances, babe, with ministry and stuff like that? Um, I'm actually handling the finances more. I, man, I, they're asking questions. I'm sitting here talking the most. I know they want to hear from you more than they do me. No, you're answering them good. Okay, good. Um, they, they hear me all the time. They're like, God, Lee, this guy ever <laughs> stop talking? Let your wife talk, for goodness sakes. Yeah, we're gonna. Well, I'm gonna get some questions. People are asking me a lot of questions on here, so I'm gonna make sure that I, I move them over to you. Okay. Did you answer the question though? Is that was that your? How answer? do we manage our finances by the grace of Jesus Christ? <laughs> no, honestly, if you it depends on how you ask the question. Personally, I actually handle managing the finances personally. I have more of an eye on it, but my wife is more frugal than me. I'm more of the spender. Um, she is more of the. Uh, frugal one she's more of like why are you doing this why are you spending that what are you doing tell me everything you know wives y'all want to know what's going on so uh, you know i but I, th I think i think a good answer to that is just we're very open about yeah. i mean i don't i don't like to necessarily get involved in the finances mm -hmm. because i can get stressed so he, that's why he tries to but it's very open yeah. it's never like you can't look at this you can't be in that yeah it's it's you know i think my mom always told me, like, it's, it's not me or you, it's ours. So yeah. everything is ours. I tell, my, I tell my wife, just chill, I got this. <laughs> you know, he really does. Though. I'm like, it's going to, she's like, are we going to be all right? I'm like, of course we're going to be all right, because I live by faith. I, do, I, make, always. I make crazy decisions sometimes. She's like, you sure we can do that? I'm like, we can do it, you know? Obviously, sometimes I have to listen, but, I, you know, um, but he's been like that. I want to qualify it. Like when we literally had, like we were on food stamps, like we had nothing. Like he's always had the faith that we're going to make it out. God's going to provide. So it's like that's always been his mindset. So that's that helps, you know, in that way because, you know, you believe it and you believe what the word says. God's going to provide no matter what happens. So Yeah, God is our provider, man. Yeah. You know, and, and he, he says, you know, one of the things that keep me strong, is that he feeds the birds of the air, he clothes the flowers of the field. How much more you want to do that? Solomon and all the flowers were way bigger than even Solomon in all of his splendor. How much more will he not do that for us? So I just, you know, I just trust God, man. I just know he's my daddy and I know he's going to take care of me. I, I've always, by the grace of God, I've never been one who's in debt. I'm not a debt guy. My wife will tell you, I try to pay stuff off. I hate debt. I hate it because you're a slave to who you owe money the to. Lender, yeah. Even credit cards, I have them, but I pay them off instantly. Like I'll just use it to get sky miles and <laughs> and hotel reward points and stuff like that. Um, I just trust the Lord, you know, and uh, I just hate debt. But I know God's a God's a good God. I always paid my cars off, even even before I was a Christian. I've always had that instilled in me. And I think God put that in me just to make sure I could run a ministry appropriately because we for now if we're talking ministry, if we're talking about the ministry funds, I have a whole financial team. Like mm -hmm. I I have a financial team that is watching all of that. Mm -hmm. Um we try our best to dialogue with our, our group of people within the ministry on making decisions on that kind of stuff and all that. So that's a whole nother thing though. That's when you have your little board, you have all this stuff going on and um so ministry is a whole nother conversation, but personal finances, uh, we definitely talk to each other, but sometimes if I sense that my, my wife is just a little bit hold backish and is saying, are we going to be okay? That's pretty much my green light to jump. You know? <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. Somebody say you got a question for my wife, Keegan. Like women wearing head coverings? Hmm. Oh, but, but but what's the question though? You gotta qualify. You gotta give me. You gotta the, give tell me what the question is. We got qu qu all Keegan saying. Oh. Oh. Okay. How do you submit to your husband as your covering? Oh. All right. Go ahead, babe. Well, I used to have a bad 
uh, taste in my mouth about that word because I feel like the world gives us a very bad, um, you know, thing when it comes to the word submit, especially in this day and age with, you know, the feminist movement and all that stuff. So before I was saved, it was like, you know, I'm independent. I don't need anybody. I don't need to submit. I'm strong, you know. And that that can all be true, but when you realize the the true power that comes behind the submission and love, it's it's truly it's it's everything's a uh, principle, right? So when you honor that principle that the Lord has put in place, and you trust God that He has put that order for a reason, it actually helps you look at the word submit as not like a dictatorship or something that belittles you or you know, even shut your mouth as, as a woman or a wife, but something that is in place for a reason and is there for godly order and godly principle, it really helps. I've definitely had my struggles in the past with that, with that word, with what it means and what it looks like to walk it out. Mm -hmm. Definitely with what it looks like to walk it out because the world gives us so many... Honey, I just want to tell you, stay closer to the mic so that people can Oh, hear. can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. So many perverted views of what submission is supposed to look like versus what it really means. So once you submit in love and, you know, your husband can also understand that even though you submit to him as the head and you submit to him as the authority over the home, that he also in turn can love you enough to value you and your opinion, but at the same time, as a woman, you respect him enough to understand that he has the final say and that he does have the authority over the the wife and the children. I think it's easier to walk it out, but we have to remove all of the you know, junk that we've been fed as women before we've come to Christ. And even in Christ, you know, you can... You can hear weird doctrines of, you know, that you, you don't need you don't need a man, you don't need this, and, well, submit just means in love. You don't actually have to listen to your husband, that I have a greater call than my husband, so he's just going to sit on the sidelines while I'll go do, I'm more on fire than my husband. So even in Christ, we can get it messed up and l leave our husbands on the back burner and kind of have that perverted twisted view sometimes so i hope that answered the question but um i don't know is there anything that you you want to say to that i think you answered it very well babe Praise um, God. obviously a man doesn't lord over his wife in the way of like yes. dominant dominance uh we you know a, a man who truly covers his wife respects her what she says and you know easier said than done guys right because we got this pride issue and this ego thing we ego trip um but we definitely want to know her as a form in a way of like wisdom and the holy spirit in our marriage they represent that kind of so um she the wife should have a big input on our decision making process and if you respect that then things are going to go good, you know? So don't worry. I'm getting better at it myself. Trust me. I'm yeah. Not, I'm not going to sit here and say I'm perfect at listening to everything my wife is telling me. <laughs> but Well, that's exactly what I was going to say because I just saw a comment. So it, it, we haven't always been, you know, in alignment and agreement with everything. So I've had to submit when it hurts, when even when Daniel – was out of order like years ago when we first got married when he wasn't in the right when he was actually doing wrong when he's actually going down a bad path this was years ago but you still you have to submit so it is easy I saw someone say it is easy to submit when your husband's in line and in tune with God but there's so many women that feel like they don't have to because their husband's not saved their husband is is this or that the third so you know, it doesn't change. The godly principle and the order doesn't change despite on what your husband's doing. So that helped me tremendously because I used to think, well, only if I know he's hearing the Lord, I'm going to listen to him. Well, only if he's doing this. Well, it was like conditional submission when that's never what the Bible teaches for a woman, a woman of honor and integrity and things like that. So I don't want anybody to hear me wrong because now Daniel is, you know, he's really in tune with, you know, the, the Holy Spirit, but it was not always like that in her marriage. So I have had to 
submit and it's been very painful to submit when you know I knew that things weren't gonna you know go wrong or we weren't good in our marriage so that's an encouragement for you wives that your you know your husbands aren't necessarily there yet but still stay strong in that submission to the Lord number one and in turn it will give you um, that submission that you need to your husband because it is not conditional to what he's doing, what he's saying, and you know that kind of thing. Juliana, that's good. With the man is demonized hard. You got to be able to recognize when it's him and when it's not. I, I would never look. Some people will say, "Follow your husband off a cliff and and just drown." Uh, listen, you have your personal relationship with the Lord, and if he's if he's going, for example, if he's going into a bar and he's getting like wasted and he wants to bring you in there to get wasted you don't get wasted mm-hmm. you follow god before mm-hmm. a man's bad decision okay and if it if it if his decision is a risk taking decision that looks scary that's not the same as what i'm talking about you got to go for that but if he's if he's doing if he's if he's getting high if he's drinking if he's doing you don't do that stuff you don't you don't follow him into those places ladies All right. So I just want to qualify that because some women will be like, oh, we got to follow him into this. I've met people that get married and the the husband will start doing like, what's that stuff? Fentanyl. And then the woman's doing fentanyl, you know. But if you that's why. Listen, listen, women, you have your personal relationship. Men, you have your personal relationship. All right. You have your personal relationship. He does, too. Don't forget that because you're going to stand in front of Jesus alone, not with each other at the end, okay? All right? So just remember that. Just remember that. Um, Somebody asked, I see Brandon up there. What's up, Brandon? God bless you. Love you, man. I'm going to ask you, answer your question, but I want to answer this. Uh, My man, Tim Ferreria, the discerning dad, also man of God on here in the chat, he said, date night ideas. Now, transparency, I have been horrible I'm just gonna be real at taking my wife on proper dates I would say when I say proper dates like dressed up we going out to the restaurant <laughs> we doing it big we actually did that recently we went to an Italian restaurant so when I say horrible I mean I should do it more the only I don't want you guys to think that I never take my wife out or I don't love her she just knows we've been really busy lately and there's no excuses no excuses not making it I kind of made some excuses but I'm not but I did. But I repent. But you admit it, though. And yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't try to hide it. See, look how she's happy. She's like, yay, you know. It. See, that's the thing. It's the little at, things. At, at, yeah, it's the little things. At least you know, right? Um, but when we... <laughs> I told you guys, nobody's perfect at stuff. We're learning, yeah. right? I'm learning, too. Um, I would say we like to... Look, I'm a movie guy. Believe it or not. I like movies. It helps me be more prophetic in this crazy world. I can go watch a movie and I can see what's coming, boy. Like, listen, some of y'all will be like, you watched Aquaman. I went and watched Aquaman. I can tell you the agenda that's coming. My goodness, we'll talk. Maybe I'll do a, maybe that's a a video I can do on the new Aquaman movie. It wasn't really a bad, bad movie. It wasn't like nothing super bad in it. But my goodness, I can tell you the agenda. Maybe I'll have to do this off of Facebook and YouTube because if I talk about this stuff, they might be like, boom, you know, and I don't want it. I don't want that to happen. But anyway, that's a whole nother question. So sometimes I like to go, I, huh? Yeah, Mighty Networks. That's right. Um, sometimes I like to go and, you know, watch movies with my wife. We'll pick a good one that we could go see. You know, we try to be picky on that because movies are not good anymore. Back in the day, movies were movies. Like movies were movies. They still had good moral values. You still saw the family aspect. Now they're trying to implement all these these nasty agendas and stuff into it. And obviously, guys, Aquaman is the Marine Kingdom. I know, demonic. So, yes, I get that, all right? Don't worry. I didn't go pick up a new Marine spirit. All right? I know some people are going to be like, oh, we got to pray for Daniel. He went and got an Aquaman something. I was just praying for women the other day who idolized Aquaman. <laughs> yeah, that was crazy. It's the idolatry of stuff. Um, but... Yeah, Sound of Freedom was a great movie. So we we really need to pray about when we go see a movie and stuff like that and make sure the Lord gives us the green light. 
Um, when I went to see that movie the other day with my wife, I I kind of felt I got I kind of felt I got I didn't have a red flag in my spirit. If I feel that red flag or that unction not to do it, I don't go. There's been movies, man. I've I've d- ignored. I ignored that feeling, and I ended up in a pl- seeing something that shouldn't have been seen. Mm-hmm. So I pay attention to that because the Lord knows what's in the movie before we do, right? Sometimes He wants us to watch them, though, guys, to get discernment so that we can give warnings. Mm-hmm. Because the devil puts things out in the open, and he wants us Christians to be discerning about it. So sometimes I'll take her, like somebody said, "The Sound of Freedom." We watched that movie when it came out. Um, we watched. I try to get her to watch The Chosen with me. I'm trying to catch up on all. The I saw that season. one in theaters. Yeah, but I'm trying to catch up on the third season. You took the girls to watch it, and yeah, and I didn't even get to see it. I saw Jesus Revolution. <laughs> yeah, Jesus Revolution. So we do that sometimes, and then we go out to eat too much sometimes. That's been a date thing. Um, what else do we do? <laughs> we hold hands and smile at each other. Well, you know. <laughs> you wanted to laugh, I? Isaiah's is back here laughing. I don't even know why he's laughing. We hold it. For date night ideas, I need to pull this out. I actually have like in my room, in my drawer, it's like these cards that are for couples. So it can give you just like little ideas that doesn't have to be an extravagant thing. Like, you know, I'm more simple. Like Daniel likes going to movies, but I'm just like, I just want to hang out with you, sit and talk and smile at each other. That's every lady. All ladies want that. They're like, we don't care about the movie. We want you to hold our hand. So like when I'm in the movie, I'm over there and I'm like, hey. What? I can't even get my hand. Oh, there it is. Y'all can't see it, but my hand got there. And so I'll put my hand on her and then she's happy the rest of the movie. She's like, oh man, he touched me. Praise God. What? What? She's she's like, that's what I came here for. Now, Now it's... <laughs> Everybody's laughing because y'all want real, right? Then you got you got to give her a little kiss. What? <laughs> I'm giving the formula, guys. The formula. So when you go in, when you go in the movie, what's it, Adam? With the moves, you like it? <laughs> I tell you, it's good. I'm telling y'all the formula. So, men, when you go to the movie, this is. You gotta sneak your hand over, just like the first time you've ever been together. All right, you 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 sneak the hands. You just you slick. So you're still, you're still like, it's still real. You know what I'm saying? I'm teaching Isaiah and Keegan right here, and you guys. So you move over and they're like, she's like, what up? I'm like, what up? And then it's like, you sure look good today. You know, and the movie's playing, and the, you've completely forgot about the movie. Now all you can see is this beautiful creature <laughs> just sitting there. And 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 as that beautiful creature's right there, you go, baby, I know a movie's playing, but you're the only movie for me. And then, you know, if you need future children, if you're married, of course you got to be married, anything like that. If you're planning, listen, if you're planning on getting married, because some of you are taking the girl for the first time to the movie. Hopefully you're not holding her hand in the movie yet, okay? Um, then marriage is a definite. Isaiah has his iPhone notes out. He's taking then, notes. Then marriage is a definite. <laughs> so, guys, I'm telling you how to do things in the movie. Now, be careful. Be careful in the movie. Some of y'all need to take y'all's wife, and y'all need to do this. Go in the movie, and when the movie's playing, just stop in the middle of the most important part of the movie and just look over. What? And be like, hey, girl, you're way more important in this movie. What up? <laughs> That's all you got to do. <laughs> this is how he really acts in real life. That's why we're all like laughing so hard right now. That's it, This man. is how he really flirts. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> like, this isn't just a show. <laughs> this isn't an act. <laughs> nah, this is it. That's it. I'm like, what? I'm like, you know, I drop my eyes a little bit. <laughs> this is this is this is how you know it's real right here, guys. You <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you hit hurt. listen, you hit that head nod. He does the head nod all the time. It's over. My cheeks hurt. You're like <laughs> <laughs> It's the end. 
I just get look. I give y'all. I gave y'all for real. I gave y'all the keys. The key. if you guys take any woman out, hopefully your future wife, and you hit the head nod, oh, they're gonna smile. Then be like, "What's wrong with you?" The, and then you got the ladies are like, "Mm mm," and you be like, "Mm hmm." So they'll hit you with the "Mm mm," and you gotta go "Mm hmm, mm hmm," and you be like, "I hear the wedding bells," and they're like, "I hear jingle bells." No, I was wedding bells. Jingle. <laughs> So, <laughs> I don't Tim know said, I "Did the fall here. from heaven hurt?" <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, enough of this. See, y'all got me going. Y'all asked the right. <laughs> uh, that was good. That was good. You guys, I, look, people are getting married just from watching this. I'm telling you, they, they, I've just had marriages. There's been an impartation of marriage. Yeah. Men, men just became men, literally. I think Keegan's gonna sleep with the notes that he just took. He's gonna he's gonna dream Look, about. Watch the this, notes. watch y'all wanna know that I'll give you a good pickup line. So if you're prophetic, you'll catch, baby. Even you make Snoopy look good. What? <laughs> See that? Got it. It's done. Oh it's God. done. My whole day is just off of that. My whole day is satisfied. Even I don't know what to say. You see that? Even she makes Snoopy look good. I'm at a loss for words, yeah. literally. <laughs> I'm telling y'all, man, I know what's up. I'm speechless. I know what's up. People don't want. People don't want to know. I'm telling you. I see. I've messed up so bad in life. <laughs> I've 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 horribly failed in marriage. I know how to do marriage. You get what I'm saying? Like I had the hard road. So like, yeah. <laughs> Oh no, sorry, James. We're with you, my my friend. We're with you, brother. If you make sure you use your forerunner family for support, all right. We we want to fight for you, guys. We're gonna put James Campbell in prayer. He just said uh, he just had something. Him and his wife uh, had something happen. So we're praying, man, that that spirit will leave and that you guys will be whole in Jesus' name. Look what Tim said. Tim said, "Now I know why Solomon had seven hundred wives because he never met you." <laughs> <laughs> that was good. But guys, this is how we stay married. You know, one thing I love about um Amen Annette. One of the things I love about, you know, being married to Heather is she's playful. We can have a good time and she likes to make me happy too. So No, that know. that is something that very much attracted me to Daniel though, is all jokes aside. I love that he's goofy and he's funny. We gotta laugh. We we love to laugh. Yeah. You want marriage? Yeah, marriage we has can't to have laughs. Can't be too laughs. serious for too long. I, I we, see. We just gotta laugh all the time. Have you guys ever, Isaiah and Keegan? Have you guys ever seen them couples? And it's like, it's like they're just there. <laughs> like you know, they don't like each other. Like they, the bitterness, the bitterness radar is there. They just are like, oh, I got. I'm, I'm just gonna live with you and die. It's like they're roommates. Well, we're just together because we had these kids, you know? I, like, golly, man. Who wants to live like that? Like, lighten up. Do something fun. The only reason marriages dry out is because other things become become more important than each other. Like, somewhere, it, it, and it's also spiritual, too. Somewhere you let spirit spouses in, you let perversion come in, it just twists everything up. Now you can't even look at your wife the same way because you're seeing other things. So then you, you, you know, now she could be totally beautiful. Ain't that funny? People commit adultery and stuff in marriages, but they'll commit adultery. They'll go to the next one and the next one, and then the next one gets ugly. The next one gets ugly. The next one's ugly, and they're not ugly. It's just you let a spirit in that makes them ugly because the spirit wants to be married to you. That's a whole nother teaching. <clears throat> so, yeah. Um, yeah, glorified roommates. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, next question, guys. Uh, we still got a little time left. I'm gonna, because of the Wi-Fi issues, I'm going to keep run, rolling here for a little while. Um, so, guys, I have mods on here that type on my behalf, so y'all chill. Uh, calls his wife. Okay. Someone asked oh, if you have awesome. daddy daughter dates. You do actually do that. Yep. I think they get more dates than me, but I'm okay with that. <laughs> do I have daddy daughter dates? Yes, I, I, but I need to do them more too, guys. There's, we can listen. We can always do more. We can always do more. 
Yeah, but explain what you you do. Yeah, do. like I'll, you do do it. I mean, nobody's yeah. gonna be perfect. Either. I individually, you know, Faith loves going to sushi. Yeah, just my, like her daddy. She's, she likes to. <laughs> daddy, can we go to sushi? Hope will be like Hope. I don't even know what Hope man. Hope Hope, hope wants to go to the mall. She'll ask to go. Yeah, Hope wants to shop, man. So like, yeah, they, Hope is like. I think she's worse than Faith. <laughs> he was shopping. Yeah, yeah I, yes. I'm like, I couldn't. Faith just wants some food now. She's a growing girl. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I do do d- daddy daughter dates, yes. and that's gonna show them what a what a. <laughs> I got three women in my life, guys. I got my wife and my two daughters. Y'all pray for me. Y'all pray for me, but it's worth it. Hey, I see somebody said, what's your opinion on being married and going to two different churches? And one you know that God called you to be in one church and your spouse doesn't want to do it. Okay, Abraham, gotcha. Um, one of you have to sacrifice. First of all, does both of the churches at least teach the word of God? Watch this. I, I would say this. Go to the church. Who Somebody's going to have to humble themselves and take the position of going to a church, but here's where you can win. Are y'all ready? Here's where you can win. Take that low road, show them you're willing to submit and go, and then you can have a supplement ministry, i.e. the supernatural life. Be like, look, there has to be compromise in a good way. I'll go to your church, but you have to allow me to be in the, the supplementary ministry to keep me sane as I go to this church. So I can be involved in what I believe I want to be involved into. So that's one way, okay? So that's one way. You can go over here because you can't force people, but at least you got them in the kingdom. At least they're at a foundational level, all right? So compromise in that area. Go. Make sure the Word of God is being taught. Don't go to no Unitarian churches and all that stuff that teach some crazy stuff. Make sure at least the doctrinal part is right, and then... Go find a supplement and say, hey, but you have to let me be a part of this so that I can stay sane. I'll go to your Sunday thing here, but I want to be sane here because I'm here. I've moved right here. This is why I love the ministry that the Lord has given me because uh, I, it's a supernatural life and people supplement it for supplement sometimes to, to keep their sanity while they go to some of this crazy stuff, you know. <laughs> Uh, meaning as they go to a church that may just have the word there and you got to go over here, you know, so just make, make those compromises. And eventually what will happen is they'll see that, that you're willing to do that. And they'll, they'll come on over to your side anyway, but you got to be humble. Humility brings breakthrough. Remember that God exalts the humble. So if you're willing to humble yourself and do that and just God makes a way where there seems to be no way he does. Now, Keegan, what did you just say a minute ago? You were talking about something. You said something. It was good what you just said. It was gonna lead me. It was gonna lead me somewhere. Oh, it was a question up here. Oh, uh, somebody asked. So let's let's answer this about. Uh, somebody said Christmas is a pagan holiday. How can you how you how can you uh, celebrate it? You every day of your life is influenced by paganism to some capacity. You should tell them what the days of the week mean. Even the days of the week are pagan. Monday, Tuesday. So if you're celebrating Monday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you're celebrating some pagan. If, what stores are you going to? Did pagans start that? You know what I'm saying? Like, I know y'all be on Amazon. You got them Androids, oh. Apple phones. <laughs> oh. Guys, if we go into this, <laughs> Tim, <laughs> that's a whole nother one. So, guys, the months are pagan. If we really want to get into this, we can. Now, look, one holiday I will not celebrate is Halloween because it's just dark. Ooh. It's death. It's all, like you can't find no good in Halloween. No. No, no, it's no. impossible. Like if you try to, you can't. I just go and sh- shine the light. But Christmas, the literal reason of Christmas supposed to be is the birth of Jesus Christ. Nativity scenes. I mean, you can feel the spirit. People and we know unity. it's not his birthday, by people the People are bringing love, and, and it's all gravy, you know? Unless people are just doing it for Santa Claus, then you need to repent. Mm-hmm. But man, you know? It is what it is. I wonder if the people that are mad about Christmas celebrate their birthdays. <laughs> oh, birthdays are pagan, too. 
Let's just go on about <laughs> I'm that. Just joking. I mean, you're gonna, you might as well go become a Jehovah Witness for goodness sake. <laughs> Honestly, I like, I say this, I like Christmas because it is a time that the kids are off of school, people get off work. It's a time to come together with family. So why let, you know, oh, it's pagan, get in the way from enjoying time with family, enjoying things that bring so much joy, giving to other people, first of all, you know. It's an amazing time to give to those who are less fortunate. Those like last year, we we gave away um, like a thousand dollars. I sent it out. Daniel, I was like, "What do you want for Christmas?" He was like, "Let's just give to families who don't have anything." Mm-hmm. So I just he gave the money to me, and I Venmoed you know people that couldn't get stuff for their kids. So you you know you can find the positive in Chris. Like Halloween's a different thing, but. Personally, we don't let the kids think Santa's real. We don't tell them that Santa's bringing you gifts. Like that's that's a whole nother thing. But we yeah. just revolve it around Jesus, Look. the birth of Christ, and and, and watch. I want to tell you how you can make Santa Claus good. You really can watch Saint Nick. Tell them Santa Claus yeah. is derived from Saint Nick, yeah. not a big fat guy in a robe right. that can he fit was down a, real a chimney. Person. Yeah. He was a real person that actually did very good uh, mm-hmm. things mm-hmm. for people. So St. Nick is real. So if you guys talk about Santa Claus, listen, even if you guys see people taking pictures with Santa Claus, mm-hmm. tell them the real reason about St. Nick and what he did and what he represented. See, a lot of people don't do their homework. Catholics are <coughs> excuse me, Catholics are actually better at, uh, at teaching about the saints because, well, you know, because they get the history lessons, right? Uh, us Christians, we just go and say everything's the devil. See what I'm saying? So uh, Santa Claus was supposedly derived from St. Nick, okay? Tell them about St. Nicholas and what he did. And then, you you know, then you can kind of help people, you know? You can help yeah, people. Give good. them the understanding. Don't just jump in and say, you're sitting on, you're sitting on Satan's lap, you know, don't do that, guys. <laughs> don't do that. that. These people don't care, man. They don't care about sit. They're like they'll and they'll attack you. I remember when I got really religious. I'd tell my mom and my sister, "You couldn't do this. You shouldn't do that, man." They got all condemned and messed mm-hmm. up, and they attacked me, man. So I, I've learned to to navigate the waters in a different way. It helps. Like, hey, you know that picture with Santa Claus? Because can I tell you the story about Saint Nicholas? The, the story behind the man, instead of there's a big fat red, red man with reindeers coming to get your cookies at night, you know what I'm saying, and your milk. Can I tell you what it really means? You, you, you know? No, it's true, man. Someone said pull the head non-move. <laughs> they you know? love your head non-move. <laughs> you see, so we got to teach people about, like, like, what St. Nick really means, guys. All right? So, Christmas Town in Heaven. <laughs> so, all right, people in your lives do Santa. Okay, so what about other people in your lives do Santa with your kids? Do you tell your kids not to tell or spoil it for other kids? My kids just birth it out. So, no, they need to tell people Santa Claus is fake. Santa Claus <laughs> is straight up fake. That's the reason people have a hard time believing Jesus because yeah. their parents have told them that Santa's fake. My daughter will tell kids straight up Santa Claus is fake. And then the parents want to get mad at me. Ain't my fault. I taught my kid to know that Jesus is the gift giver. Right, right. Jesus is the gift giver. That's why the world is deceived like it is. Telling your kids a fat red man with reindeers and 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 milk and cookies coming to get it later on and leaving you gifts is a lie. Yeah. It's a lie. Yeah. Stop lying to your kids, man. That's why they don't respect you. You lied to them about the fat man. You know how many ki- I've seen the amount of disappointment that enters into the people's kids' heart that when they say Santa Claus isn't real. Yeah. It's I like, see. oh, Santa, you lied to me, Mom and Dad. It breaks their heart, man. Yeah. Just tell them from the beginning, hey, I know your friends believe in the fat guy, but let me tell you something. We believe in Jesus, man. We I saw a post Jesus. that says some parents will get their kids to believe Santa more than they try to get them to believe in the gospel and Jesus. And I was like, wow, that's so true. Or like the tooth fairy or any of those things. It's, you know, and no condemnation if you do do this, but to really take into consideration what we're saying. So, yeah. you know, 
Yeah. Oops. I hit the bike. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Elf on a shelf is demise. Ain't no elf watching me. No, don't. Yeah. You ever see that thing? It looks like he's looking at you. I want to get a BB gun and just take it out. <laughs> a BB gun? Yeah. I just want to knock that shelf elf right off the shelf, man. I saw this good alternative, though. It's called a shepherd boy. So it was this plushie. I almost got it this year. It's like a shepherd boy. And every day, instead of doing the elf on the shelf, you put the shepherd boy with a new Bible verse of the story of Luke or something like that. So there's there's alternatives. So where you could still keep that if you want to do a tradition or something, you know, that we can make it about Jesus and them learning the word and them learning the the story of of Mary, Joseph, and birthing Jesus. There's so many good things if you just research it, you know? Yeah. You imagine you walk in a house and there's this little elf. And he, <laughs> one moment he's sitting on the, 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 the fireplace. Then you look over, he's on the TV. I'm like, you little sucker. <laughs> like, what you want? You want to do this or what? Mm-hmm. Yeah? No wonder. <laughs> Man, I, that elf on the shelf, that thing is weird, bro. What if you're asleep, you wake up, and there's the elf? We haven't, we, we gonna fight, man. Me and that, I'm tearing the, I'm tearing the stuffing out of that thing, man. That elf on the shelf ain't messing with me. Like, you know, I'm like, wait, that elf's gonna be get the cage fighter damn man. I'm taking that thing out in the spirit. I chose violence because the, that elf, that little demon elf, I'm serious, man. I'm so tired of that elf in the shelf, man. <laughs> I'm tired of that thing. I look over and there it is. You go somewhere else and he's over there. I'm like, Where, what is this, man? Someone said it's a modern It spirit. is a monitoring spirit. <laughs> I do have beef with the elf. I'm sick of that thing, man. Y'all stop putting that elf all over the place. <laughs> I go plays that darn elf is everywhere, man. Somebody said, did I ever use the Bible as a spiritual sword? Can I tell you guys something? I know you saw my handkerchief videos and all that. Listen, I think I've tried almost everything. If I could rip this carpet up and put it on somebody's head to, to, to cause healing to happen in the name of Jesus, we'll do it, man. We just do whatever we have to do for the glory of Jesus. Um, let me see. How do you mature in the Lord? Read the word, pray, and fall deeper in love with him every day. He'll, his spirit, you'll mature over time, trust me. Daniel always says, get around people that are doing more than you. Yeah. Or get around people that have gone farther than you, and that'll help yeah. you accelerate and mature faster. Exactly. You gotta, you gotta, you got to read books from people that are gone ahead of you. Stay around people that have went further than you, that have more information. You know, humility is the key to growth. You, you have to be humble. Um, that's how you grow. You stay around people that have done it already. You will grow, and you'll go further than them, you know, but you got to... You gotta get. You gotta humble yourself. Mm-hmm. Humility is the sign to growth. Humility is the sign to growth. Is the key to growth. I mean, um, on the chat down here, any more questions, guys? On Zoom, I'll take about two or three. Yeah, we live for the laugh, Tim. We live for the laugh. How did you know you were ready for marriage, and what was the process of blending your families? Ooh. We didn't know we were ready. You you got to go listen to my testimony video. We didn't know we were ready. I, we did everything backwards. Um, the process of blending families was probably harder for for um, Heather to take on, because I mean I'll be real. When Heather was first coming in, she she had to die to herself too. She had to die in the way of. Um, my wife was very self focused in the beginning. Yeah, she had some bad teaching in her head and she, you know, thank God she's, she's a millennial right there. She was like one year from being Gen Z, nothing against (laughs) Gen Z, she's one year, but, um, it was not easy for her because she's younger than me. She's eight years younger. So I have a little bit more of, uh, I'm not, I'm not mature all the way. Trust me, I'm growing, man. But I had a little bit more life experience. She didn't have no life experience. So my wife had to take on, uh, Big things, big things that she shouldn't have had to take on, but she did. And it was a process and it wasn't easy to watch her go through it. Sometimes I had to help her through it. Mm. I wasn't the best at helping her through it, but we got through it at times. So I'll let you answer. What was that process like? babe? I think you answered it beautifully. I was definitely very selfish. I think 
the best way I can describe it is God knew I needed that to. And one, uh, let me be, be let me qualify. Is I mean, selfish in the way of she thought that her dreams and her things for God yes. were going to be put back because she was taking on other kids. Yes. You know, you were taking on things. You were like, I. She would tell me sometimes, I I don't have to do that. I'm like, yeah, you don't have to. Yes. You know, but then I think the Lord dealt with her in some areas. My, my wife was like that in the beginning. She'd be like, rah, 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 rah. and then I'd give her about 10 minutes, and she's like, oh, yeah, well, I was wrong. And, uh, you know, just give them a little time to think, you know. Yeah, well, I think I was selfish in that way with the dreams and stuff, but I was just selfish in general because, you know, anybody, most of people have kids. You, you know that you're – you completely have to die to yourself and being all about you and what you want. And the the kids have made it not always easy, but especially the the girls, the, you know, they're they are so they are beautiful human beings. Faith speaks so much life and encouragement into me. So they haven't made it hard. I think it was just hard for like what you're saying, changing my mindset and coming out of that. I was 23, I think when yeah, I was 23 when I took on three kids overnight, a husband and then a leader to a ministry. So, um, it, but what I was saying was God knew that that needed to happen in my life to get me to where I'm at today, to accelerate me in the things of God and to uh, establish me as, as, a, as a true woman of God and um, get me founded in my identity in him. And I, God knew I needed that in my life. Definitely with, if, if you know, you know anything about me, I, I needed that to get where I'm at today. So I always used to think that it did steal my dreams or hold me back because I was so young, but actually it's accelerated me mm-hmm. in, in wisdom and, and nurturing and love and compassion for others. And when I was uh, reading my vows on my wedding day, I did vows to the kids, and it's just like she blew me away. God, <laughs> God gave totally. me the revelation that mor- morning about how he, we're actually adopted into His kingdom. So, how much more is it not precious to God when you can take <coughs> on, you know, n- not necessarily adopting, um, you know, them, but I am taking them on as as my own. So I've been adopted into a kingdom, into a new family. So taking them on as as my own and loving them as my own has really like changed my life so great answer honey um somebody asked about like if you're divorced do you remarry i answered that question earlier i want to help some divorcees okay i know people will come at you with the bible verse about putting away your wife and if you marry again, you commit adultery. Guys, There is I don't think there is a perpetual sin, a such thing as a perpetual sin. There is the act that causes sin. So so guys in the chat on Zoom, is, is there a perpetual sin that you can think of, or is there the act? I'm, I'm being serious because I want to, I want before I continue on, I want to know if I'm missing anything. Is there a perpetual sin, meaning one that just continues on and on and on that you can never get out of? that you can think of, or is it just the one-time act? So perpetual sin means a sin that is continuing on and on and on and on and on and on. But, uh, you know, it, it's a moment-to-moment thing. So it's moment-to-moment. So perpetual means it's something you've done that just continues on. Like you do it and there's no getting away from it. So I think some people have, have created with adultery this perpetual thing. Now, if you're in adultery, meaning this, you commit the act of adultery, but you never change it. Just like if you're an addict, but you never change it. Mo- it's a conscious thing, right? Moment by moment, addict, 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 adulterer, 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 until you choose to change the action and receive God's grace. So there, that's what makes things per- perpetual, but it's moment to moment, guys. It's not like like all the time, because in at any moment you can actually change your identity from being that by accepting what Christ has done on the cross. So to say something is perpetual, always ongoing, it just means that you're choosing to believe that moment to moment to moment. Sin means missing the mark, so you're missing the mark. So divorce and remarriage, people will say if you divorce and remarry and your other spouse is still alive, you're committing adultery. Well, let's go into the Bible 
And let's go behind that because I had to research this a little bit more and God brought this to my being. Do you know in that moment when Jesus, first of all, Jesus was showing how much we could not obtain the law in our own strength. And he actually took the law up a notch with mm-hmm. the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Cause, so he came and there was two people arguing, right? Uh, there was t- two religious leaders. Uh, I forget their names. Uh, it was, I knew their names, but I can't quite remember. Maybe somebody can tell me in the chat. Um, they were arguing because here was what was happening. Some people still had their their divorce uh, contract. I mean, their marriage contracts, but they were not giving under Moses's law uh, a certificate of divorce. And what they would do is they would go and they would just put a wife away and just go get another wife without ever giving a certificate of divorce. But what happened though is Jesus said, "It is divorce is not in my kingdom." It is not something that I, I I am for. It is not something that I agree with. So you're going if we're going to go by the law, my standard is even higher than Moses' law. My standard in my way is bigger than that. I, and he, actually, Jesus was the law. I mean, he made the law, right? So so it's the standard was high, and he was showing them first of all, nobody should be putting away their wife and choosing somebody else and stuff like that. So a lot of times we see divorce happens, right? So we see divorce happen because um, of trauma, of pain, of damage and stuff. So I brought that up because in that situation, people were literally putting away their wife without a certificate of divorce and remarrying, which means you're still married Mm -hmm. and you are bringing another wife. So now you have two wives, three wives, four wives, but there there was no cut dry thing. So yes, you are in adultery. Because your first, you never give the uh, the certificate of divorce, and this is by watch again, guys. This is by the law of Moses. So yes, you could divorce by the law of Moses for the means of a, of of adultery, the means of fornication, the means of. Can you guys be be careful what you're doing, please, Keegan? Um, all all of these things, right? So this is what they like to do sometimes. So I got to get on them. They're like little kids. I got to make sure they t- that they're fine. So they would give these, they would give these, uh, these things, and then hold on. They back again in Jesus' name. <laughs> they would not give their wife a certificate of divorce, and they would bring somebody else in, mm-hmm. right? So they were committing adultery because they never got away. So you can't have one wife and then be married to another. I mean, it's polygamy, right? Monogamy was in the jo- Jewish culture at that time, I believe. I think so. Um, so when you, if we bring it to modern day, people get divorced because of honestly the hardness of heart. The Bible says the hardness of heart is what causes people to divorce. Mm-hmm. Okay, so the hardness of heart, pride, mean meaning you can you just become like what do you call it? emotionless. So you're emo- a lot of people are listening to this because nobody is commenting right now. Unless Isaiah just isn't bringing the comments down. I don't think nobody's commenting though. Yeah. So so people become emotionless. They lose emotion. They get self. You know, it's selfish to do those things, and then they end up, you know, getting divorced. Mm-hmm. So you'll hear it straight from me. Okay, divorce is demonic. Divorce is wrong. When two people come together, they become one flesh. Do some people marry before they should? Yes, they do. They marry before they should, and then they end up in a world of mess because God never wanted them to get together. But they don't also let grace come in and allow God to heal what he probably didn't want to put together at that time. That's why grace is there, guys. That's why we have grace, okay? So you're hearing it from me. Divorce is demonic. Jesus has the, the, the ministry of reconciliation, not the ministry of condemnation. All right. So with this being said, can divorcees be forgiven? Yes, because under the law, you have given a certificate of divorce. Now, here's what you need to do spiritually. You need to own your guilt. You need to go before God, own your guilt, tell him that you sinned against him by breaking the covenant of marriage because he's a covenant keeping God and he doesn't break covenant with us. We have misrepresented him very bad. Lord, please forgive me for this. I come before you humbly and I say, forgive me. I'm sorry. We are in relationship, Lord. I should not have done this. And I'm telling you, God will have mercy upon you. He will have mercy upon you. Now, step two, after you do this, you go, you go in the realm of the spirit and you say, hey, I'm, 
a break off the, what we had in the past, blah, blah, blah. Now what happens, what happens now is you have to allow healing and restoration to come into your life. You need to find out why you got divorced on your end. You need to find out, did you learn this from your family? Uh, you know, stuff like that. Also, abuse happens sometimes. We have abusive marriages. I don't condone abusive marriages. We should not have abusive marriages, okay? Abuse is bad. It is demonic. But now you got to go back and be like, okay, what part did I play in this? I need to own it. I'm not a victim. A lot of divorcees play the victim card, and they get into another marriage coming with a victimized mentality, okay, with a victimized mentality. So we come in victimized, and now we go into another relationship victimized. Mm -hmm. If you go into a relationship with a victim mentality, that one's probably going to fail too. You have to understand, own where you were wrong. Takes two to tango. You weren't innocent in the whole thing, okay? Takes two to tango. Relationships fall apart because you weren't also uh, innocent. You, you had your mistake. Somebody said the Samaritan woman at the well that had several husbands was not condemned by Jesus. Exactly. Jesus was bringing revelation of grace, and it caught her to come right. Amen? So she had five husbands, <laughs> meaning that she was all over the place. But... But we have to own our part, and we have to allow healing to come in. We have to allow deliverance to happen. And then we got to wait until we get the green light by the Holy Spirit before we even go have a relationship. Why are you going to be married 10 years and then go find somebody else because you're lonely? You're lonely because you haven't truly gotten to know God the way that you should. Because the truth is, you would feel whole going into another relationship. You'll be whole. All right? If, if you feel like you need a relationship... Before you have relationship with Jesus, then there's a problem. Now you're going to make that man or woman your God. Mm -hmm. And now they're going to be their representation of what Jesus needs to be in your life. And, and they're going to fail you because people come with unhealthy expectations. You need to know Jesus first. Do I believe this is me? Guys, not everybody's going to agree with what I'm saying, okay? Some people are going to say, no, if you're divorced and remarried, you're, you're an adulterer. Okay, that's up to you. That's between... I got to deal with God one day. I got to stand in front of him with my problems, my things, my mistakes, okay? It is what it is. I will stand before Jesus as a, a formerly married man. I've been, I'm actually on my third marriage, my final marriage, right? My best marriage, amazing marriage. Praise God, I had to learn the hard way, right? But I'm, I'm on my third marriage, but I have to stand in front of God. If we're going to do weights and balances and scales and all that stuff, I'm in trouble. I'm messed up. I'm going to hell, literally, if, if we go by that. But I also have received the one who gives me the forgiveness of sins. I have repented of my sins. I have turned from my wicked ways, my old mindsets, my old thinking. So if you guys think I'm going to hell, then don't follow me. Get away from me. Don't let me lead you down the wrong road. I don't want to do that. If you believe that, that I'm just doomed and gloomed, then why would you even listen to me? Just get away. But the th <clears throat> I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't listen to somebody and condemn them all day. I'd just go do my thing and just say, you got to deal with God, right? right. Let me deal with God. I got to deal with God, but I'm going to preach his gospel. I will not stand for divorce. Just because I've had a divorce don't mean I stand for divorce. Do y'all hear me? Just because I made mistakes don't mean that everybody else can make mistakes. Okay, my mistakes don't give you, <clears throat> give you a green light to go and make mistakes. But I am my wife's first marriage and only marriage. Praise God. Amen. So, so I have to deal with my past just like you have to deal with yours. Y'all want me to take it a little bit deeper? All of you are adulterers, every last one of you, to some extent. But why? Because you've lusted at some point in your heart towards somebody. And if you say that you've never lusted, the devil is a liar. You understand? All of you have lusted. I don't care how old you are or what. You've lusted after something. If You, you lusted after that cupcake. You lusted after... Uh, after a man or woman, you looked at something and you're like, mm. so all of you have committed, forn uh, not fornication, adultery at some point, to look at a woman or to look at a man and to lust after them in your heart, you have committed adultery. Jesus took everything up a notch. So actually, if the Bible says, if we go by the law of Moses, all of y'all got a green light to exit. Mm -hmm. All of you do. Because it says for the sake of immorality, right? So everybody's in trouble. So if y'all want to do the law, we can do the law. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? If we want to go by the law, we can go by the law now. But I hope you can uphold the standard of every other law. That's why these people that put all this condemnation on the divorcees, I really hope that you are holding the standard that you're holding for yourself in other areas. I hope as you're married to your wife, you're not falling into pornography. You're not falling into masturbation. You're not looking at no other woman because then you... <laughs> 
you would be an adulterer. And have you confessed it to your wife that you have been looking at another woman? Just listen, I'm, I'm, I'm hurting some people's feelings right now. Because look, just because you're married and you make it look pretty don't mean it's pretty. Maybe, 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 watch this, you're married, but you're, you're, you're having an affair with an inbox woman, with a woman in her inbox, because your wife don't listen, but you're okay with that. Huh? Maybe you're sitting there uh, doing unhealthy things, watching, I said the word peace, but hopefully it don't make me up, but wa watching pornography and, and, and doing masturbation and all that, and you're justifying it, but just because you're, you're married and everything looks okay, you're going to make it to heaven. I'm going to tell you something. The Lord is going to show you that woman you were looking at uh, all the way through your marriage just because it, you physically wasn't showing it. Do you see do you see how much I can if I'm if I'm really I can be that guy. I can go ding 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 ding, right? But I don't do that, guys. I'm a grace guy. I believe in the grace of Jesus Christ, the mercy of God. I say if you've had a divorce, own it. Ask the Lord to give you mercy. Ask him let him heal you and then allow him to bring somebody else. God's really good at that. And it'll be way better. You won't be in the same trauma, you won't be in the same pain, pain okay? You won't be in that stuff. God can do miracles. I'm a living miracle of a man who's had affairs, as a man who has broken marriage, who has been walked out on in a marriage. I, I have had all that happen to me, and I am a living miracle of what God can do if you humble yourself before him and you own your part. I went back to my spouses, ex-spouses, and I asked them to forgive me for what I have done to them, how I misrepresented them, how I didn't play the best friend. After I got revelation, I went back and owned my part. I don't have an expectation for them to own their part. My wife will tell you, I don't have that expectation. I got, I got me to worry about. So I go back and I told them, forgive me. Now, you know, every, just life is good right now. Praise the Lord Jesus, right? So anyway, that's what I believe on remarriage and divorce. You guys got it right there. And uh, I'm not for divorce. I'm actually like Jesus. I'm against it. I don't agree with it. I don't think we should even remarry. I think we should get married one time and that be it. That's what I believe. Um, unfortunately, it don't happen that way. So we thank God for his mercy and grace to take another shot and get it right, right? This is not a green light to leave your husband and wife. If you've heard this and you want to leave your husband and wife, now you got to have your weight on your back because God wants you to heal and restore your marriage. Amen? I hope that helps. Babe, was that a lot? That was a lot. And the chat slowed down a lot because I was giving out some info. Very helpful. Okay, I hope that helps somebody and uh, stuff. I'll take uh, maybe, give me, let me get one more. Bring another, give me another question, guys. What do you, when do you know to, to step out faith, lay hands on the sick? I always hear, don't go out if you have not been sent. You were sent that in Mark 16, 15 through 18, and Matthew 10, 8, and Luke 10. You were sent to heal the sick, cast out demons. Cleanse the leper and raise the dead. God has sent you already. So you can start doing that in the harvest field. Jesus himself sent you. You just get under somebody so that they can help cultivate the gifts in your life and, and, to, and you know, just to watch after your soul and help you out. What is it? Okay. If you're courting someone and God reveals they have a corn problem and they repent, get delivered, and start getting discipleship, should they stop dating for a year? I would say, Yasmunda, I would say give it some time to see if the change is there. Like, don't be in a hurry, you know. Um, a year, I mean, a year, just be friends, man. Court. We use the word dating, man. We need to get back to courtship, guys. Just court. Be friends and watch the process of healing. And if you see the healing, then yeah. Then yeah. Yeah. 18, is it okay to like a female and get to know her? Hold on. If she get to know her, if she save, can give you... Uh, 18, is it okay to like a female? Well, if you're 18 years old, I'm sure your testosterone is high, um, unless you have some issues and you love females. It's natural for men to do that. So yes, it's okay. You should look at a woman and appreciate her beauty. As an 18-year-old man, some people are laughing right now. I see it on Zoom. It's okay. Um, but it's natural for a man to like a woman. I'm glad. I hope that you like women only. Not you, Arkeem. I'm just talking about, I'm just shooting that out there so people know that we need to like the opposite sex. All right, go up. 
uh, where is he at? And uh, some tips is court, be a friend, you know, be a friend to this person. Uh, watch their relationship with Jesus and don't trespass. If you trespass, mm. then you are not going to look like the man that she needs. So if you go over there and you get touchy, touchy, filly, filly, and you start kissing all over and putting your hand in places that don't need to go, then you've kind of messed up. You've actually trespassed on the property, if you know what I mean. And it usually does not turn out too good. It turns out, it means you don't, you don't, you don't have the means. I'm not talking to you exactly, but you don't have the capacity to have a woman right now because you don't even know how to treat her. It's all about the body and not the heart. What does it take to see an angel? Faith. Faith. Um, but yeah, just respect the girl and, uh, love her and meaning with the love of Christ. Should we avoid even kissing while dating? Here's, here's what I, uh, yes. You put them lips together, boy, passion starts flying, fires start burning. You, you can't go to sleep at night. You can't wait for the next kiss. Yeah, you might, you didn't trouble. All y'all know, all y'all laughing because you know what I'm saying is true. You lock them lips. Next thing you know, you got your hands rolling. You know what I'm saying? Keegan. Uh, Keegan said that's so true. So, yeah. Passion ignites with the kiss of the lips. Watch. Songs of Solomon. What? Songs of Solomon. Kiss me with the kisses of your lips. There's passion birthed with yeah. the Shulamite woman. There's passion. You know, there's a passion that just burns. I'm telling you, man. There's some there's something spiritual that happens when lip, lips lock. It is crazy. And then next thing you know, look, let's just go to PG-13. Next thing you know, your tongue kissing, it's over. Now you're making excuses to why you can do everything else. It's more than just a kiss. Come on guys, let's be real. Y'all y'all it's crazy. Yes, let Jesus kiss you first. I would say a peck on the cheek. Maybe. But that's because, that's because, yeah, no, no physical contact is great. But, you know, a, a holy kiss. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? A hug and a holy kiss. Your kiss. Y'all don't want me to teach sexual education. <laughs> it's, uh, I'm telling you. It's, <laughs> it's, uh, if, uh, you know what? Maybe I'll do that for the forerunners one day. Y'all y'all ain't ready for that, man. I'll teach some no. stuff that'll have you... Uh, my, Man, shoot. Uh, Somebody said, I kissed Lord. dating goodbye. Looked, <laughs> book ruined my youth crew. Yeah. I, I, yeah, abstain from it. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all, y'all, y'all. I, I got I feel like I need to teach some stuff. Oh, God. My wife is like, oh, no. What's this guy going to say? But yeah, you can. <laughs> It's tough because I don't because it used to be Jewish tradition to give a kiss on the cheek, you know. So that's just neighbor. In Spanish cultures, you see also they come right up to you and give you a big old wet kiss on the cheek, They're like besos all day. They coming to give some kisses. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we need a we will we're gonna get it. But they like I've got I've went into like Spanish countries, boy. I've got more kisses than I can shake a stick at. <laughs> they just kiss you, kiss you, kiss you. And you don't get mad because you know it's just the culture. It's a cheat. And and the older ones, man, they make sure, boy, hey, them kisses, them Spanish kisses on another level on the cheek, man. You leave with some extra anointing. Where is my where is my where is my Spanish folks on here? Y'all know what I'm talking about? Can anybody give me a little bit of an amen? Just a little bit. Y'all know all about them kisses. Now sometimes they be getting close. You know, they'll kiss you like right here. They're getting real. All right, mama. Look, you gotten too close now. We got to chill a little bit. Look, everybody's saying amen. I'm telling you, I've been around the world. And Italians, oh, my goodness. Let's not talk about the Italian grandma now. That's a whole nother level. <laughs> Somebody said, claro. Yeah, claro, for sure. <laughs> claro, claro que si. Yeah, claro. It was spelled, I think it spelled it wrong. Yeah, yeah. Man, Italian said right in the mouth. Guys, this is real deal stuff right here. France, yeah, in France. Oh my goodness, I've heard, I've heard. 
But uh, <laughs> guys, it is. It, and so like culture, cl- culture, you know, brings some of this, you know. So like you got to understand cultures when you go places. You can't get offended because you go to a culture where it's a tradition to get a kiss on the chick. Greet them with a hug and a holy kiss. There's nothing wrong with that. A holy kiss, right? So, you know, I, I personally, guys, my men in the Forerunners ministry and and here watching, I I mean, I love you guys. I, I, I don't think we're going to start to kiss in those. Some of y'all need to shave, man. You know what I'm saying? I can't do it. Like Isaiah, he's like a whole woolly mammoth. I couldn't imagine kissing that cheek, boy. That thing, you'll get lost in there. You'll be taken over. You would, man. It's crazy. Ah, my wife is like, what in the world is going on here? That means we've gotten off left field. Let me stop, guys. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> this is Daniel and Heather talk, but somehow I've gotten over here. Let me cut it out. But it's true. Don't, I would say don't get into kissing. Um, Don't get into kissing before marriage because it's going it's gonna to ignite passion. It's going to ignite passion, okay? And you don't want to do that, all right? All right, one more, one more. Yeah, somebody, somebody said, now your cheek smells like what? What does that go? Up? Garlic, <laughs> onion. That's what I was laughing at, Garlic and too. onion, yeah. Especially Isaiah's because his beard, his beard <laughs> eats, too, when he eats. Boy, that's crazy. Y'all ever eat with my, my boy over here, Isaiah's? No. His beard eats with his with his self, him and his beard. <laughs> it's crazy. All right. Um, how do you write to start if I'm 14? Uh, Moyo, you can start evangelizing, my friend. You can. Just start loving on people out and about in your life. You can be 14 years old, 10 years old. You know, somebody said leave his beard alone. He just loved that. That wasn't me loving that, by the way. All right. Um, give me a question for husband and wife. One more question of husband and wife, please. I want Heather to jump in on one more before we get to the end, end of this. I met Isaiah and Keegan through the Holy Spirit natural means. Keegan came to me in Wisconsin? No, Illinois. Yeah, he came to me in Illinois and, and he was like, he was like, he was like, I want to be free. <laughs> He's like, what am I going to do? <laughs> That's how it kind of went, though. A hand straight up in the air, and he's like, set me free. He did put his hands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm looking for, um, I'm looking for somebody's a question for me and Heather. How do you break the silence when neither one wants to say, I'm sorry? You you say I'm sorry. If you're asking the question about that, usually you have to humble Daniel, yourself. Daniel's actually usually the first person. Oh, I'm to, I'm beast mode on. I that. will be honest about that. He he'll usually be the first one to humble himself and and come over and put his arm around me and be like, I'm sorry. Yeah. Even if it was me. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah, I. I want to say eight times out of ten. I yeah. It's usually you first. I, I have because I'm going to be waiting like three years. <laughs> I'm waiting three years for Heather. I ain't got. To, I'm 36 Daddy almost. Lord. I'm about to be 36 oh, in January. I can't have her wasting time for me right now. I Thanks got. God. I just got to go up and say it. I got to get over it. Hey, forgive me. I'm. I'm going on. I'm the leader <laughs> anyway. So let me go. Let me go hold it down. You know. Go up. What was that? What What did Bit- Bitya say? I ask about the bedroom stuff. How can we honor God? Uh, of course, Isaiah wants to highlight this one. How can we honor <laughs> God? I got you. How can we honor God there? We don't want to love one another in a perverse way, but we don't know what's okay or not. Maybe I should do a teaching on that. Guys, the marriage bed is undefiled. You are supposed to uh, enjoy each other's body. I mean, I think I should answer this. I don't know if my wife, I don't, yeah. Let me, let me ask, let me answer this. I don't know what you're I say, say this in the bedroom. Here's what I would say. Don't bring into your sex life in the bedroom. Don't bring sex toys. Yeah. Okay. Sex toys are a big no-no. No, they are. They're that's that's no-no. Okay. Don't do that because then you're bringing things. You're saying you could be saying I'm just gonna be real transparent. Get your kids out the room. You you could be no no. Now you're saying that they don't have enough to make you happy. Let's just be real. 
All right? Let's just be real. If you got to bring toys, you're saying they don't have what needs to satisfy you. Yeah. And now what happens is people people lose the ability to really love their husband and wife appropriately. Mm. And the toy becomes actually more of their marriage partner than than the marriage partner. So I would keep toys out of the room. And I would say also people are asking me about oral and stuff like that. No, guys, it's just something that definitely is not okay. This is demonic. If you want to say that one. Uh, Which one? Uh, Oh, sod. Yeah. Sodomy. I would say guys, listen, that's, that's, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Stay away from that. (laughs) Yeah. I need to do a forerunner teaching. I would definitely, yeah, I'm going to be careful on here, but I'm just saying, yeah, stay away from that stuff, man. Why? Oh, help me, Lord Jesus. I, yeah, I, I, if you don't know why you should stay away from there, then I don't know what to tell you. All I can say is that leads to some bad places. All right, I'll just say that. You guys are old enough to know what I'm talking about. And yet, you teenagers, you need to hear this too, because welcome to school. Amen. Um, Have fun. No holds barred in the in the, in the marriage bid, but... Make sure that you have boundaries in the right areas. You guys, follow the Holy Spirit in your bedroom. Honor your wife's body. Honor your husband's body. Honor what they want. Honor what they... Don't be trying to force nothing on your marriage partner that they don't like. Some of y'all be in there, be forcing stuff, and then you wonder why your wife don't, or your husband don't want nothing to do with you. It's because you're forcing them to do stuff. So don't do that, guys. So, man, I need to do a, ch- a whole live stream on this, man. Yeah, I think I really be, do. I but the marriage bit is pure and undefiled. Jesus is in it. Here's another thing, guys. Bring tongues into the situation sometimes. Y- you mean speaking in tongues? Speaking in tongues. Okay, all right. You got to go. Bring, <laughs> look, y'all act like Jesus ain't in the middle of what's going on. And some people want to make exposed videos on this, but it's the truth. Jesus is there. He is there. And let me tell you something. If Jesus is there, heaven is. It's true. I'm going to qualify again. He meant praying in, in his heavenly language. Yeah, yeah, praying in tongues. in tongues. Sometimes you can't help but pray in tongues. <laughs> I'm being sp- Look, if you got a good marriage, you want to speak in tongues. What do y'all want? I got three kids. What am I supposed to say? I mean, that's what you do. You got it. It's that's how it is. Build your spirit up. I don't know why everybody's laughing. <laughs> it is. It's it's not fried, guys. It's the truth. Come on, man. Bring bring Holy Ghost is there. You don't think heaven's celebrating with you? I'm just telling you. Y'all have no idea. All right. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> I'm just I'm, I'm just being real. <laughs> it is what it is, guys. Y'all men need to learn how to be men. <laughs> Sorry, I think our mics are breaking <laughs> up. I think I think the Wi Fi signals <laughs> Cutting out again. <laughs> Listen, hey, I promise you guys, if you guys think like me right now, <laughs> your marriage will last long. What? Heaven is rejoicing. I'm serious. <laughs> I'm telling you guys. I'm telling you. All right. That's it. That's the answer to your question. That's it. This is why I can't come on here. We're just going to do... Because he talks... He gets really himself around me, I think. Like, so he's really... This is really him. Like, he's just talking how he would to anybody right now. We are standing (laughs) on holy ground. And the angels are all around. It's true, man. Oh, that's a good question for you. So we could... This last one, I think we could... Y'all know what? This is how I'm so free. Because I'm free in every aspect of my life. I'm hev- Heaven is with me everywhere I go in Jesus' name. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. This is how it should be. Someone asked about gaming, if they can, <clears throat> if they can game, if they can 
honor, still honor God. Yeah, I mean, if you game and you don't become addicted, and the game yeah. is feasible, and you, you know, yeah, you can have, you can play, you can play video games. Just, you know, if you were a gaming addict and all that stuff, I would say, you know, <laughs> you need the healing. Yeah, you don't want to use gaming to escape reality. A lot of people yes. like video games to escape reality. You know, like I play some. Yeah, don't play none of the crazy, messy yeah. ones, man. Like. Some people say don't play Super Mario, but that stuff's fun platformers and stuff, like Crash Bandicoot, Ratchet and Clank. Some of that stuff's fun. Yes, everything is going to have some connotation of like, you're going to see witchcraft everywhere. You're going to see everything everywhere. Yeah. Just follow the Holy Spirit, guys. Be led by the Holy Spirit on some of that stuff, okay? And and you can game and minister. Exactly. I used to play games. People were getting mm -hmm. saved. I played mm -hmm. online. You know, I played online. I mean, yeah, you, and Isaiah you, can, you can do. No, nah, I ain't talking bad about Mario. It's a me, it's a Mario. It's awesome. That was such it's a good Luigi. movie, yeah, yeah. too. It was, was a good movie. It was movie. a cute movie. Peaches, 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 peaches. Whooping. No. Y'all know anything about whooping while pre? I don't know what that is, brother. All right, for real, one more. One oh, more. Gosh. I, I got to go do some Christmas shopping. One more. I got to go. I, I'm, I'm way behind. Okay. <laughs> How do you pray? I, I'm gonna. I'm wait for a good one that Heather can answer. Uh, how do I pray for my husband to get his fire for the Lord back? Just stay in the prayer closet, and look like Jesus even around him for sure. And look, guys, I don't. I don't expect everybody to agree with everything I'm saying. Okay, that's the beautiful thing about the body of Christ. All right, I don't expect complete agreement on everything. I'm not asking you guys to. I'm just helping. Doing my best to help with the knowledge and wisdom that I have. Every everybody has different convictions. I believe that there's a scripture. I don't want to butcher that scripture, but it's like if if God, if Holy Spirit doesn't give you a conviction, it's not labeled as a sin in the Bible, then it's not sin, right? So like people will get convicted about movies and TV shows. They have to cut out every single movie, even if it's a Christian one, because that they've been addicted or games. If you're convicted and you continue to do it, then it really is a sin, right? But we're not going to have the same convictions as everybody else. So yeah. we don't expect you to agree on. So if you have convictions about games, about anything, don't do it. Because Holy Spirit's mm -hmm. leading you away for that for a reason. Somebody said, do I suggest, uh, do, do you suggest people to be single instead of married? Um, <laughs> everything, different strokes for different folks. Um I've seen very little people grace for singleness. Very, very little. Some people, my even my wife would be like, I'm grace for singleness. And I'm looking like, mm. I did used to say that. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> yeah, grace for singleness. No, I don't, I think it's better to be married. It's better to marry, you know. It's a beautiful, marriage is beautiful. Marriage is amazing. And it shows an aspect of God's character that you can't get from being single, you know. <laughs> I'm saying as we see it. So. <laughs> Go, hold on, hold on. Wait. Ah, Jay Diamond said, "What kind of oxen machine should I get my wife? Because every time she sees me, I take her breath away." Come on, see, I'm not the only one, guys. Come on, man. Ah, does Heather? Okay, good question. Does Heather still post? Let me talk about this. Let me talk about it. I'm trying to get my wife back on YouTube, guys. Please, you know what? Here's what I want you guys to do. What are you going to have them do? <laughs> I'm scared. Anytime y'all see her posting on social media, say, come back to YouTube. Come back to YouTube. She's really, really talented, guys. Creative. I mean, she's a great talker when she really gets into it. I told her, I said, just do a video a week or like every two weeks. She, she, I think she feels like she's got to keep up with me, but I, I got five YouTube channels, yeah. and even the guys that create help me with the media can barely keep up with me. Now, I don't, I don't accept, suggest anybody keep up with me. I don't suggest anybody try to keep well, up. Well, actually, with for twenty twenty four, we already have a date set up to set up a camera in my office and get my office all fixed up. So that's the first step, right? Yeah, we got to get you right. We'll get you right. We're gonna get her office all set up for her studio. Go to, as a pastor said, what? That you if you ain't married in your twenties, marriage ain't for you. We rebuke that devil. Not the pastor. Rebuke the demon behind him. Because that's just the demon trying to keep you from getting married. Don't listen to that. Yeah, I'm gonna come back on TikTok lives, guys. It's just been I've been so like trying I got I gotta plan a whole headquarters and everything. 
They're looking for land. There's all kinds of things going on right now. Uh, I got to get back on some stuff, but. Okay, I think uh, I think we're good, guys. Did you were you blessed by this? Did you guys enjoy me and Heather's live right now? If you did, can you put a like a a number uh, uno in there, number one? If you guys really enjoyed it, just to let me know. If you really enjoyed this live with my wife, I'm gonna do more with her for sure. We'll do topic heavy too. I wanted to do Q and A's today. Amen. Look at the ones, the ones. Well, the ones. we definitely need to come back and. How many, what's over here? Uh, how many do we have participating on Zoom right now? See, okay, came in pretty heavy today, guys. Also, if you're just joining in on the vlog channel, guys, make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell, like and share. Everybody on Facebook, do the same for me, please. It helps push it in the algorithm. Sometimes these, these platforms aren't the nicest in the world. But that's okay. I never understood. You could, you could have 700,000 followers and they only push it out to like 200 people. It's insane. I don't understand that. Social media is weird. Man. It's crazy. It's crazy. We were? Amen. Amen. Well, it's a, it, you know, most people like the healing and deliverance and prophetic teaching and all that stuff, which we're going to get to, but you guys need this part too. Right, this is part of life. If you don't hear about, you know, I've understood that everybody wants to be spiritual, but nobody wants to have a good marriage. <laughs> you know, you can get you can get all this spiritual stuff, right? You can get all these things, but then you don't have a good marriage. What do you got? You don't have. I mean, it's good to learn this stuff, but man, like, let's clean up where we need to clean up. That's why this kind of stuff is good. I'm gonna definitely come back on here and talk about like the craziest stuff. Because I can talk about that. I just can't get over that. Someone asked you to do the head nod. You paused. And then you were like, like you got yourself prepared to do the head nod. No. I'm still thinking about that. <laughs> He's so cute. It's my wife. <laughs> it's my baby. Anyways, I enjoyed this. I enjoyed being with you all. See you real soon. And love you guys. Uh, no, this will not be the last time you see me before 2024. We have some videos that will be coming out, and I'll, I'm sure I'll live stream. Exciting videos. Yeah, we got some good stuff coming out. Big stuff. So, oh, that's, that's a sad. Woo, excuse me. My goodness. All right, guys. Well, I think that's it. You guys have a wonderful day. God bless all of you who will be doing what me and Keegan are going to do. We're going to go Christmas shopping. We need prayer. Um, we could probably have a crusade today. <laughs> what? All these people that'll be out. Oh, yeah. So, hey, true. Merry Christmas. I love you guys. We bless you guys, me and my beautiful wife and team here. Hope you guys have been encouraged. May your families be blessed. May your Christmas be blessed. May the rest of your days be blessed. And may 2024 be even more blessed than this year. In Jesus' name, love you guys. See you soon.